everyone, it's Claire here and today I thought we would take a look at some of the more commonly used core fabrics in cloth pads. This video is probably more aimed towards those that are planning to sew their own pads. However, if you are confused by the different core fabrics out there you're seeing in cloth pad sellers shops, then maybe this video will help explain a bit more what each of them are and their pros and cons. So I'm going to start with the most easily available and also the cheapest available cloth pad core material and that is flannel. So here we have some plain white flannel, as you can see. It's a very thin material it is 100% cotton and very readily available. I mean, pretty much all fabric stores will have white flannel. You can easily get it online. Um, if you can't get your hands on it from a bolt to buy by the meter, then you can pop along to your local supermarket or shop and purchase some large flannel sheets and cut those up and use them for cores as they work just as well. If you have some old flannel sheets at home or old flannel pyjamas then you can upcycle those for your cores too and it won't cost you a penny. If you are purchasing your flannel it is generally round about £5 a metre however I have found it in some stores for as little as £3 a metre. So definitely shop around for your flannel. Um, if you want to go down the organic and natural route with your cloth pads but can't afford some of the higher priced materials out there, you can get organic unbleached flannel pretty easily online and that runs at about £10 a metre. So still in a reasonable price range and not as dear as some of the other higher end fabrics. Now, apart from the price, obviously the pros with flannel is the fact it is 100% cotton. It is very easy to take care of. It withstands higher temperatures with washing. Um, it's one of those fabrics that you could be very flexible with because you can make cores completely out of flannel or you can use it for sandwiching your other cores which I will come on to a little bit later. Um, one thing to bear in mind that I feel is a bit of a con with flannel as a core fabric is if you have very heavy or are looking to make postpartum pads because flannel is so thin you need to use quite a few layers. Now, if you go for eight layers plus of flannel in a cloth pad, it does make quite a bulky cloth pad and um, a slightly stiffer cloth pad. Now, some ladies really like a cloth pad that's a bit more substantial and holds its shape, or others prefer floppy. If you're after a heavy or super heavy um cloth pad with a flannel core then it's going to be slightly on the stiffer end so that's really the only con to flannel because I think it is a great fabric for cloth pad cores especially those just starting out sewing their own because it is so easily available and such a great price so that's flannel the next is bamboo this is bamboo terry, but you can also get cotton terry. So basically it's toweling, similar to what you would get with your bath towels. Um, except if you generally buy it from off the bolt, it's not as thick as your bath towels because generally that's a few layers together. But this is a one layer and you can see it is still quite thin. It is a highly absorbent material. If you get bamboo terry, um, it will be usually around 90% bamboo and 10% polyester. The cotton terry can be the same percentage 
or I have found you can get 100% cotton terry as well. Price range, terry is really about in the middle there at 10 to 12 pound a metre if purchased from a fabric store or online fabric store. However, you can upcycle towels at home that you're no longer using. Um, and you can also go and buy budget ranges in the supermarkets or when they have sales on their towels and get your terry that way. It is just as good. Often shop-bought towels are thicker, so you will need less layers than with the terry that you buy from the fabric store. Um, I have tried both and I do prefer the purchased terry as it is thinner and gives a slightly thinner core if you're using in your lighter pads. A downside with terry is kind of similar to flannel in the fact that if you need super heavy or postpartum then again this is going to make a thicker and stiffer pad but if you don't mind that then obviously that's no problem at all. Um, and if you have a light to moderate period, then terry is a perfect core material for you. Um, again, it's also great for sandwiching for those materials that need sandwiching for your cores. Then we come on to bamboo fleece. Bamboo fleece has a smooth side like so and a fleecy side. Now there's often questions about which way round you should put this in your pad. It really doesn't matter. It is personal preference. I like to have it the fleecy side up, but you can use it either way. Some people, it's worth noting, also use this as a topper um, and use the smooth side as the part closest touching their skin. So there's another use for it there. You generally see standard bamboo fleece or heavy bamboo fleece. The difference here is really the weight and thickness of the fleece itself. So if you do have the standard, um, which runs at around £15 per metre, then you will need slightly more layers than if you have the heavy, which runs at about £17-£18 per metre generally. Now, it's often called organic bamboo fleece. I prefer not to use that term, although it is thrown about an awful lot, because its actual makeup is 70% bamboo viscose, which is not guaranteed or certified organic, and 30% organic cotton. So with fabric, it can be very confusing and misleading because you only need a very low percentage of organic fabric mixed in with the rest of the fabric for you to be able to label it as organic. So I just wanted to make that clear. It does not make this fabric any less desirable. It is amazing for cause. Um, but I just wanted to point out that the whole thing is not organic. Um, it's also generally unbleached, which is a definite plus, and it is highly, highly absorbent. You must, must, must pre-wash this a few times because it has a tendency to shrink. So do pre-wash before sewing with it. Otherwise, a con will be your cores could shrink up within your pads. Um, a definite pro of this is you don't have to sandwich this. You don't have to worry about compression leaks with um, bamboo fleece. So you can sew straight away. But if you are new to sewing, my recommendation would be to sandwich it with um, maybe some flannel just to make it easier to sew as it has a bit of stretch and you can sometimes end up with a wonky or slightly larger core than you would plan to have as it stretches while you're sewing. If you're an accomplished sewer, then this probably won't be a problem for you at all. So I absolutely, I do love this fabric. It is one of my favourites because it makes a nice floppy core. 
Um, so that's bamboo fleece. Now Zorb. There's quite a few types of Zorb available. Um, but they are quite difficult to attain in many countries. However, most seem to be able to get Zorb one with a few that sadly can't get their hands on it. So I thought I would cover Zorb one. Zorb one is a core material that needs to go within your pad however they do Zorb 2 and Zorb Dimple and stuff which can actually um, be used as your topper but like I said I'm going to cover Zorb 1 here as it is most readily available and you are looking at around £14 per meter for Zorb. The exact contents of Zorb is not really known as they don't have to give an ingredients list, if you like, for their fabric. However, they list it as um, wicking fibres. It has been very popular in the cloth diapering nappy community for years now. And it is now extremely popular in the cloth pad community. Um, a couple of reasons for that is that... It will absorb 10 times its weight in moisture within 10 seconds, which is 20 times faster than other knits like the bamboo fleece and the terry toweling. So it's highly absorbent and you get a lot more absorbency for your material. Um, it is very thin, as you can see here, like so. So if you have a, for example, a standard cycle with a standard heavy flow, you could have two layers of Zorb sandwiched between two layers of flannel, for example, or bamboo fleece, whatever your preference is and your flow is, and you will have a thin, nice um, floppy pad there. So it really cuts down on thickness and bulk, which makes it great for postpartum and super heavy pads especially coupled with bamboo fleece. So it is very good for those with heavier flow and those that have a lighter flow, you can have just one layer of this with a bit of flannel and you're good to go. So that's a nice thin pad there. The reason I keep mentioning about sandwiching your Zorb is it, because it holds so much liquid um, and it is so thin, it is prone to compression leaks. So if you have, um, if you're using Zorb for incontinence pads or menstrual pads, it is recommended that you sandwich it to prevent that. So you put another absorbent layer on the bottom, which can be flannel, terry, bamboo fleece, depending on your absorbency level, what you have to hand. Um, and that will prevent any kind of compression. So that I also find actually as well, it helps keep your Zorb in very good condition. You do not pre-wash Zorb. You can sew with this straight away. If you pre-wash it um, without it being in something, it will start to kind of come apart. So it is best sandwiched between something. Once it is sandwiched and in your pad, it has an extremely long lifespan. And the more you wash it, the more absorbent Zorb becomes. Um, that's the same actually with bamboo fleece as well. So I think that covers everything. Oh, I did want to mention some people who are very sensitive can have allergies to Zorb. Now, if you are worried about um, any kind of allergy... I suggest purchasing a sample or a fat quarter from somewhere, taking a square of it and wearing it in your bra for 24 hours. It sounds a bit weird, I know, but it's a really good way to test if you are going to have any kind of severe reaction to it. I do get itchy hands when working with it, which I think is because it's of the type of fibre it is. It's kind of felty in feel. Um, but I do not have any reaction in my pads at all. And I did do the bra test as well. But if you want to be sure, invest small and do a patch test with it. So that's it from me. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe. That's it for now. Goodbye.